Hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation, Plants Going Green, Intelligent Optimization for Power Plants. My name is Hoda Karaki, and I'll be showing you today how model-based design and model predictive control were applied to a large-scale project to create an intelligent optimizer for power plants. First, I'll give a quick intro. The reality is there is great political and social pressure on power plants to become greener and reduce their emissions. For example, in Germany, where we are located, there is a hard limit on the amount of pollutants a power plant can produce. Crossing these limits can lead to heavy fines. Older power plants, those at least 30 years old, are particularly vulnerable to this and are generally on the lookout for solutions to improve their performance. One could replace the entire power plant with new and more efficient models, but this is a lot easier said than done. And the next best thing is to upgrade them with controllers that aim to squeeze out the best performance possible out of them. We're here today to show you that what an intelligent optimizer for a coal power plant looks like and how it is implemented. The main concepts and the optimizer structure apply to other types of power plants. Such an optimizer must be cost effective. The development costs must be kept in check. We achieve this by using a mostly software-based solution that uses widely available tools such as MATLAB, Simulink, Thermolib, C Sharp, and so on. We make use of existing infrastructure and we apply the concept of model-based design to cut down on development and testing time. We also use model predictive control so that our optimizer remains dynamic in the face of changing operating conditions. And finally, a great system that is difficult to use is not of much use, so an operator-friendly interface is a requirement. Before we go into further detail, let's take a quick look of our roadmap for today. The main three discussion points are first the issues we fa face, the solution for said issues, and the results. Under issues, particularly for those of you not too familiar with lignite coal power plants, I'll go over coal combustion and the structure of coal-fired power plants. We'll point out our goals and requirements. Once we identified our issues, we present the solution. We'll go over a big picture presentation of the main components and then a bit more into detail, using model-based design to test and verify before on-site installation and using model-in-the-loop and hardware-in-the-loop tests and a general structure of model predictive control and an overview of how it works, and how a user interface looks like and talk about installing such a system. Finally, what counts most is the results, both in terms of pollutant control and financial payback. This optimization system has already been installed in several power plants, and we've chosen to share the results from one here in Germany. So let me first start with the issues. Let me start with a bit of chemistry, coal combustion. To the uninitiated, coal is carbon. Carbon burns with oxygen, producing heat energy in carbon dioxide. The reality is not so simple and tidy. Coal actually looks something similar to this, a mixture of ashes, moisture, and other compounds, with the main constituent being carbon. The percentages of carbon, ashes, moisture, and other elements depend on the type of coal. As a side note, there are over 1,200 types of coal specified. The oxygen source is air. For most purposes, air is seen as a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen. The main elements in coal react with both oxygen and nitrogen to produce other gases than carbon dioxide. Unfortunately, most are air pollutants. Here's what the reactions mainly produce. Water, which is basically steam. Carbon dioxide, not toxic does not have a threshold by boiler guidelines, but reducing its levels leads to benefits. Sulfur oxides. These are very toxic organic compounds. They react with excess air to produce sulfur trioxide, which dissolves in water, becomes sulfuric acid, and leads to corrosion. Flue cast temperatures must be kept above the dew point to avoid this. Carbon monoxide, highly toxic and combustible. It increases the boiler's losses. Nitrogen oxides, also very toxic and attack the respiratory system directly. Ashes, these affect the efficiency via slagging. At very hot temperatures, they become too malleable and stick to the walls of the boiler, reducing the efficiency. And finally, excess oxygen. This is not a product per se, but leftover source. Excess oxygen can lead to excess pollutants and is associated with reduced efficiency. 
So there is an attempt to reduce the air-fuel ratio, ratio between oxygen and carbon. Sulfur oxides generally cannot be directly improved by optimization of combustion, but via other mechanisms. So for the optimizer we're talking about today, the focus will be on the remaining four, as was commissioned by the coal power plant, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, ashes, and oxygen. Also, by optimizing the combustion process by reducing excess oxygen, the levels of carbon dioxide are also reduced. Here is how these four components play out. On the x-axis is lambda, which is the stoichiometric ratio for the air-fuel mixture. That is the amount of air available relative to the exact amount of air needed. On the y-axis is the concentration of NOx and CO, and the efficiency. For starters, lambda less than 1 is not favorable because that means coal is not being fully used. We generally aim for lambda greater than 1. NOx and CO generally go in opposite directions. Attempting to decrease one increases the other. The blue lines mark the ideal zone for lambda, basically what our optimizer aims for. The red area marks the regular range of lambda when managed manually by operators. Here is what the reality of combustion optimization comes down to. Combustion itself takes place at locally distributed microscopic scale, but we manipulate on the macroscopic scale, for example by adjusting the levels of air entering the boiler or the mean temperatures inside the boiler. Even at this stage, it becomes apparent that what we're aiming for here is to identify the intricate interplay of the combustion parameters and to utilize that to find the optimal trade-off. To get a feel of how many variables we're talking about here, let's take a look at the structure of a coal-fired power plant. Here is a slightly simplified sketch of a coal-fired power plant. There are basically three cycles at work here. The first of which is the combustion cycle. As you can tell from the name, coal combustion takes place here, producing heat energy. In the combustion cycle, Coal is fed into a mill where it is pulverized but into tiny particles. The coal is blown with air into the combustion chamber referred to here as the boiler. Coal combustion takes place and the chemical energy stored in the coal is converted into heat energy. The second cycle is the steam cycle. Water passing through the pipes is converted into steam using both heat radiation and convection. A turbine converts a portion of the heat energy carried by the water into mechanical energy. The turbine rotates a generator rotor, converting mechanical energy into electricity. The steam leaving the turbine is condensed in the condenser here and pumped back to the boiler to complete the cycle. And finally, the cooling cycle. The cooling cycle takes care of condensing the steam coming from the turbine. Our solution aims to optimize the combustion cycle of coal, and so we concern ourselves today with only that cycle. Let's look at it in closer detail. Like I said, the coal mill pulverizes the coal into tiny particles. Small particles have in some a larger surface area, thus burn better and more thoroughly than big ones. I should mention at this point that the power plant in question is a lignite coal power plant, as opposed to hard coal power plants. Lignite coil is relatively high in moisture and needs to be dried before it is passed to the boiler. To do that, hot flue gas from the boiler is mixed with the pulverized coal. It dries the coal before it is carried towards the boiler. Air is added to the coal first at the mill through primary air dampers to carry it towards the boiler. Then additional air is added just at the entrance of the boiler. This additional air is referred to as secondary air. Certain power plants contain additional air dampers at the boiler called overfire dampers that become also part of the control equation. In addition to the production of pollutants, we need to control the temperature in the boiler. At very high temperatures, ashes often soften and begin collecting on the boiler walls. This leads first to corrosion and affects the heat transfer to the water pipes, reducing the overall efficiency. Now let's take a quick look at all the independent and dependent variables along with the disturbances that will factor into the control system. Let's sum up those variables in our system. 